afternoon guys, uh, welcome to Mooch's Ways channel. So today's video is going to be about uh, ferreting gear. So yeah, um, I'll show you my gear that I use. So to start off, when you start off ferreting, what you're going to want is something to carry your ferrets around in. So you're going to want a good sturdy box. This is a double box. So um, that will fit, I mean this one, I carry four hobs in, two in each compartment, but you know, one to each compartment if you wanted to. It's a bow back. Um, I'd recommend getting a bow back as they're, they're a lot easier to, uh, to carry. Obviously they, they sit nicely, nice adjustable strap. Decent air holes, but also on the air holes they're meshed so the ferrets can't get out because they are little escape artists and they do have a tendency, if left to their own devices, to chew. So yeah, you can get these in uh, doubles like this one, a treble box, quadruple box or singles. So yeah, that's one item you're going to need. Now obviously the next item is, well, actually depending on what type of ferreting you do, if you enjoy bolting to dogs or a gun then there's no need for nets at all, but some purse nets. Um, try and buy the best quality nets you can. You can get cheap nylon ones, uh, they're a bit light um, and they tangle a lot so I don't tend to use them. But these nets are um, actually nets I make myself. This one's actually got a bit tangled. But yeah, these ones are nets I make myself. I use good heavy rings on them. Um, I knit these myself. I do them three foot six inches, which is your standard net. Um, I don't make shape nets, I only make straight. So that's 16 meshes on the ring, same all the way down the net. Um, I do that just because I find it easier. I don't really like to mess around with the whole shape net thing. Um, that way also with a straight net you've got the same amount of meshes all the way down the net compared to a shaped net where you'll start off with a certain amount. So say you start off with nine um, and then you slowly increase as you go down the net to get that diamond shape. So you start from nine, say you get to the middle, you get 16 and then you start decreasing the meshes as you get towards the ring. Um, but yeah, I've always made straight nets. Um, I'll probably do another video on uh, net making. But once you know how to do it, it's, it's pretty easy. So yeah, um, depending on how big your warrens are, uh, obviously depends on how many nets you have. I keep my main big bag of nets, which I'll probably have 80 to 90 purse nets in here. Uh, most of which I've made over the, over the years. Um, yeah, so what you do with a purse net <coughs> is the end ring, the part without the peg, you just throw that into the hole, stretch that out over the hole, peg on the top. So when the rabbit hits the net, it will hit the middle of the net, and it'll purse, hence the name purse net. I like to do my meshes wide enough so you can get a rabbit's head through them so it makes it easier to kill the rabbit in the net instead of trying to mess around untangling uh, the rabbit from the net. So yeah, my, um, my normal net bag, like I say, between 90 to 100 purse nets I carry, but that, again, all depends on the day. Um, if all you can afford is cheap nylon nets, then that's fine, go with that. Uh, they do work, it's just personally, for the type of ferret, and we do hedgerows, stuff like that, they do tend to tangle a lot. So I make my own in uh, spun poly, which is a good material, it doesn't, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't tend to tangle, and it's quite quick to dry as well, which is a bonus, because uh, you want to try and dry your nets. Uh, 
<laughs> which I didn't do. I left my nets in my bag for a few weeks wet and they were a bit worse where I had to redo all the pegs on, but I should know better. And then we've got, as well as purse nets, we use long nets. This is a quick set 50 yard long net system and basket that I actually bought from um, Les Nelson. Uh, he makes good quality long nets. Uh, he does all different systems. If you don't know him, look him up on fa Facebook, Nelson Nets. Um, in this system as well, I keep a small five yard stop net. Uh, that's handy for going in between the hedges when you're long netting in gaps. And then I have a, another five yard stop net that I actually made out of spun poly. Uh, this is obviously a lighter nylon one. Um, good nets, but these do tend to tangle quite a bit as well. Uh, when a rabbit hits them, they'll tangle in every bit of bracken and uh, thorns that's there. So they're a bit fiddly. But these nets, brilliant nets. Um, obviously called a quick set because, <laughs> as says the name, they're quick to set. You just sort of put the basket round your neck. You take each pole out, stick it in the ground, walk backwards, and the net will come out of the basket. And you put it away in the same fashion. <clears throat> so yeah, it depends on what type of ferreting you're doing. If you're doing big hedgerows, then... Um, Long nets are easier, um, they're just quicker to set, easier to set, uh, and you don't have to go through the whole um, the whole rigmarole of trying to find every single rabbit hole and putting a purse net over them, because there are times where you will miss the odd hole and you get escapee rabbits. Um, on the downside of long netting, what you, or what we tend to find here, is the rabbits will never actually commit to running out of the hedge straight into the long net we find what well, the odd one will but what we find is they're more likely to run the inside of the hedge uh, you know what you've got to remember is a rabbit isn't a stupid creature by any means um, they're heavily predated on not only by uh, ground ground predators such as foxes goats weasels um, but they're also predated on by uh, birds of prey hawks buzzards um, so they'll always tend to run along the hedge because they know that they're safer from an aerial attack or even an attack on the ground if they run the hedgerow um, and that's where the stop nets come into play uh, because they tend to run along the hedgerow you put that stop net through gaps in the hedge and that'll catch your rabbits um, also if you're hedgerow ferreting uh, with long nets I would say it does really really pay to have a dog with you because They'll put that extra pressure on the rabbit uh, to bolt out into the field, if not catch it themselves. So a dog's always a good bet, guys. Um, but some places won't let you uh, won't let you bring a dog, so you have to use the. If you're using a long net, definitely use stop nets or gate nets, as some people call them. So yeah, um, another important piece of equipment, and this comes in two parts actually. You want a good, sturdy shovel or spade. Um, <laughs> now, there's going to be a few people who disagree because you'll have people say, oh, I've never dug a ferret out, I've never had to put a locator on my ferret. But in my mind, that's it's crazy not to. I mean, this day and age. So the second part to that piece of equipment is this. You want your locator. Now you can have a Mark 1, like this is, uh, or you can get Mark Mark 2 and Mark 3. Never use the Mark 2. Um, use the Mark 3, didn't like it. I know a lot of people swear by them, but that's down to everyone's personal preference. But I much prefer the Mark 1 knocker box. So you've got a little collar. Very easy to use. You just unscrew the cap. They take like a small watch battery, put that in the cap, screw the cap on, and on the box, a Mark 1 box, this is an 8 foot box, you have a wheel here, and you can hear that knocking, so that's out of range now, but you turn the wheel to get your range, 
So on the wheel you'll have one, two, three, four, right up to eight foot. So when you're searching your ferret, you stick that on eight foot and you just scan. Once you get the knock, then you turn it down until you hear the knock, and until you stop hearing the knock, and the last depth that you heard the knock on will be the depth that your ferret is at. Simple to use. And the reason I use these, and the reason why I don't listen when people say they don't have ferrets that kill, is because what we need to remember, guys, is that although the ferret is a domesticated animal and has been a domesticated animal for many hundreds of years, it still has n absolutely no concept of what its job is for us. A ferret doesn't think, I've got to go down this warren and bolt these rabbits for my master. <laughs> They're a predator, guys. The only thing that's on their mind is to catch and kill the rabbits, and that is exactly what they're trying to do. The rabbits only bolt in fear of the ferret. <laughs> you know, a rabbit's not gonna hang around. So, you know, ferreting works out well for us because the rabbits see or smell the ferrets. Their instinct is to bolt. We catch them in the nets. But the ferret's instinct is never to bolt the rabbits. It's always to catch and kill the rabbits. Um, so I've heard people say, you know, they'll feed their ferrets the day before they go out to stop them killing. That doesn't stop them killing, guys. That just means you haven't got hungry ferrets. So they'll still kill down, but they won't stay with a kill. So people who say their ferrets don't kill, that's not the case. They're killing, but they're just not staying with a kill. Trouble being is when you get that time where a ferret will kill a rabbit in a stop in and it'll get stuck behind the rabbit. Then you've... <laughs> If you don't use locators, you've got to then wait for that ferret to eat its way out. You know, my theory being I'd rather dig two foot for a ferret than wait two hours for a ferret without a locator to come out. The other plus side is, guys, is that you also get the rabbit that the ferret's laid up with. And when you're out on a pest control job, numbers count. You want every single rabbit down there. Not all of the time will a rabbit be dead. You'll get a ferret, especially hobs, because they're quite persistent on a rabbit. If a rabbit's in a stop end, puffed itself up, not moving, you'll have your ferret behind it, scratching on its arse. And sometimes ferrets won't leave it, so it's best to dig down to them, guys. That's just my opinion anyway. Um, I'm sure you'll tell me differently in the comments. So yeah, uh, you get these boxes in 15 foot um, and 8 foot. I have both. I've got 15 foot box and collars. Um, to be honest with you guys, I never really use the 15 foot mu one much for ferreting. Um, I actually bought this and use this for my terrier. I know a lot of you guys are going to knock me for that, saying Mark 1 for terrier work, but I've never been an out and out digging man. I'd only ever do sort of the odd fox job with my terrier, and I could never quite justify paying out for a Bellman and Flint. So I'd always use the 15 foot knocker box uh, with a terrier collar and but it served me well. I've never, lo I've never lost my terrier. So yeah, um, that's your basics. Now I just want to show you. There's another um, little setup I have, and it's this. I bought this bag um, off of the Rabbit Fever site on Facebook, run by Mark Bell. It's actually a fantastic little bag, guys. Um, especially if you want to go, if you've got a permission where. You know, you can't drive on to, to get to the Warrens if you want to walk. If they're small Warrens and you want a little day, this bag's perfect. So you've got the front compartment, and that's got air holes. That will fit two ferrets in there. If you want to put a bit of bedding in, that'll comfortably fit two ferrets. Then you've got a second compartment, nice and spacious for your nets. So I'll generally keep 20 nets in this. Um, it's actually called the Moochers bags, <laughs> appropriately. And then you've got a little compartment at the back. That can be your game compartment for your rabbits, but what I keep in this, because it's my travel light mooching bag, if I'm just walking with a dog and a, one ferret, I keep a um, small fold up shovel. Always carry a spade, whether it's my the big one or the small fold up one, because like I say, I always have um, locators on my ferrets. So that bag, two nets, a ferret or two, a little shovel, 
with your dog, you know, you can easily go out and you can have a good little walk around. So I would, I would highly recommend them bags. So if you want one of them bags, get onto Mark Bell at Rabbit Fever. Um, great value for money. I've had that probably uh, close to three years now. Um, I use it all the time for when I'm just going out on a general mooch. Come away from there. Um, so yeah, guys, um, you know, you don't really need to break the bank again with ferreting gear. Um, I know there's quite a lot of expensive nets, but um, if you can make your own do, because it was, not only will it save you a bit of money, but you never have to buy nets in your lifetime again. It's a, it's a good skill to know and to learn. It's easy to learn. Like I say, I'll do a, I'll do a video for you for that. Um, yeah. Um, if you can't make your own nets, then I would recommend finding someone um, who you can buy um, homemade nets off because I find they're the best. If you get somebody who's good at net making and puts the time into it, they're better quality nets than what you'd buy on a machine, uh, machine made, or because a lot of these cheap machine ma na made nets are actually cut off a, <coughs> a bigger sheet of netting and then the ring is stitched onto them. Um, which it, I mean, they can be fine, but I think I've got some here actually. I bought these from the Midland Game Fair. Yeah. So like stuff like this, they're uh, <laughs> they're nylon, but they're actually uh, thicker nylon. But if you can see that, the ring is actually stitched on to the netting, which has come off a sheet. And as you can see, it's not great quality, guys. It starts to fray in the it runs round the ring, which isn't very pleasing to the eye. Um, so yeah, they're cheap nets. I mean, I think I picked 10 of these up for, oh, I think I, I paid a pound a net for them. Which is cheap, guys, and if you're on a budget, then yeah, great. But if you've got a little bit more money to spend, then definitely go with someone who makes who makes uh, high quality spun poly nets. Um, because they'll last you, if you look after them, they'll last you a lifetime. And, you know, they're just, you can't beat the quality of them. You're looking at more money. Uh, you know, I know some people charge as much as £2.50 a net. But what you've got to remember, guys, is you get what you pay for. And a lot of time and effort has gone into making those nets. Uh, a lot of hours. So, but they're definitely worth the money. Same as the long nets. If you're going to get a long net, don't buy cheap. Uh, just don't do it. Uh, either go to, again, you can go to the Rabbit Fever site on Facebook. Mark Bell, he sells some... Um, good net systems, or as I've already said, Les, Les Nelson. Uh, both those guys, they sell a, a range of ferreting gear from purse nets to long net systems, uh, to the mooching bag that I just sold, uh, showed you, uh, to ferret boxes. I know Les has got a new travel box, uh, which looks interesting. Um, yeah, so I'll do you a net making video. Um, it won't be a full one. I actually haven't got any twine at the moment. I've only got a little bit of old hemp twine. So I can make, I can do like a little um, demo net for you. Um, that's another material, you know, um, not many people use hemp now. And the reason being is hemp nets are quite, um, you know, they're quite hard to look after. Well, say hard to look after. You've, you really have to hang them up after every use uh, because it's a natural material. If they get wet and you just leave them in your bag, they'll they'll rot. They won't last. Um, so yeah, that's where spun poly comes in because they won't really rot like hemp. Um, they're similar to hemp. They won't rot like hemp. So they're they're in between a hemp and a nylon net. You get the best of both worlds. Um, yeah. So as you can see, you don't need lots of gear. I mean, I personally think that one of the most important pieces of gear, apart from your ferret is the locator. Just spend out from guys. I mean, you can pick these Mark 1s up for 120 quid secondhand for a box and collar. Um, in actual fact, if you look on most groups on Facebook, sort of around this time of year, you get the same, you know, you get the same story every year, the same lads giving it up. You know, seasonal ferreters, um, they'll flog all their gear at the end of the season. Uh, and then the same people, you'll see them looking again in September. <laughs> Um, such is life though but um, yeah you can get you can always get a deal a cheap deal with them lads who've given up um, 
So yeah, if you shop around, um, I know this year there's not going to be any shows on due to COVID-19. So, I mean, that's another good place to uh, to buy gear from. But, you know, places like eBay, stuff like that. Look on Facebook groups for people who make nets. Um, I do make nets myself, but unfortunately, due to being messed around by so many people, they place orders and they, you know, they cancel on you halfway through your order, their order. Um, I stopped doing it just because I got annoyed with that. So I just personally make them for myself. But have a look around on the groups, guys, and you'll find plenty of people doing it. Um, you'll probably get a cheap deal. The more you buy, the cheaper they'll do them for, more than likely. Um, but like I say, there are cheaper options out there. There's a cheaper option for everything. Um, but as I previously said, you, you really do get what you pay for. Um, you buy cheap, you buy twice. Your gear won't last you that long. Um, so yeah, you know, once you once you've got your ferret, that's what you're looking at. Um, I mean, you can do it on a budget. You don't need you don't need all the best gear, but it does help. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people are very generous and will help new people out into the game. So. You know, um, I know someone who's just recently got into it and he was he was given a load of stuff and he he himself, you know, he's only a young lad. He got um, he got things cheap because he put a post on a group and said, you know, I'm just starting out in ferreting. And there's a lot of nice people out there that helped him out and gave him deals. So, you know, lads always look out for them deals. Um, you know, funnily enough, the cheapest piece of equipment. Oh, that you will get is the actual ferrets themselves. The ferrets themselves, you know, they are literally, you know, people don't put a value on ferrets, or I don't think they put enough value. You know, you see on uh, when people try and sell ferrets for thirty, forty quid, people will quibble, you know, quibble with that and say, ah, oh, they're not worth it. They're not worth it. But you know, at the end of the day, I think that's why they're such an undervalued animal because you can pick them up for a fiver. You know, at the end of the day, that sort of money, they're a disposable pet, unfortunately, or just a disposable commodity. Uh, yeah, they're the cheapest part of it. But at the end of the day, guys, if you get a really good working ferret, they're worth their weight in gold. Um, you know, perhaps if people did start putting the prices up, they'd go to, they'd get looked after better. Uh, yeah, but that's the way things go. Same, same thing in the dog world, you know, you see it all the time, but... That's for another video, I think. That's not a... Can't ramble on too much, guys. Um, yeah. So I thought I'd make this quick video just to explain the gear and stuff like that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'll be back with that net-making video. Um, I'll do that over the next week or so. Um, but if you've got any requests on videos you'd like to see, I'll do another one on my ferrets, my adult ferrets. Uh, I'll show you a do just go into a bit about husbandry stuff like that for you um, Just in case there's any new first-time ferret keepers out there. It's dead easy guys. You, you know don't overthink it They're really easy little animals to keep you know the best way isn't you know sometimes I know a lot of people overuse Google now Probably the best way is to ask someone you know if you Google something you get a thousand different answers and everyone's opinion is different But dead easy little animals to keep Ferreting's a great sport to get into, guys. What I'd recommend is you finding somebody uh, who's already been doing it a few years. Get out with them. Learn everything you can. Enjoy it. Thanks, guys. Remember, like and subscribe, and there'll be some more videos coming. Cheers.